QuickBooks Online 2024 Bank Reconciliation Month Number Two Deposits. Get ready and some coffee because the accounting team is on board with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation, opening the major financial statement reports like we do every time, located in the reports on the left. In the favorites, right click in the balance sheet to open link in a new tab, right click in the profit and loss, open link in a new tab, same for the trustee TB. Tabbing to the right, hamburger, close it range change it 010124 tab 022924 we're going to see it on a month by month side by side running to refreshing tabbing to the right closing the hamburger changing the ranging 010124 tab 022924 tab month by month breakout once again running to refresh and one more time tapping to the right closing the hamburger changing the range 010124 tab 022924 tab and then we will select the months and run it again let's go back to the balance sheet this time we're looking at the bank reconciliation again but for the second month of operations so in the prior section we looked at the bank reconciliation for that first month where we saw it can be a little bit more difficult because we might have that beginning balance issue on the second month of the bank reconciliations this will be similar to the reconciliation process that we will typically see going forward from that point in time so let's go back on over to this first tab let's go down to the transactions I'm going to close up the hamburger and in the reconcile tab you will recall that we can look at the prior reconciliations by opening say the history over here we have the actual report and we can open up the attachment so let's go ahead and open up the attachment for the prior uh, time frame which I saved in here for the bank reconciliation uh, for January. So this is the bank rec. Let's open that up. And this is what we had last time. So I'm going to close this out. And so that's where we left off from the prior period. Now we have a whole nother uh, month of data input. These transactions were those that were not cleared last time, which we expect to clear this time. So in other words, if I look at my bank statements, this was my bank statement last time where I had the beginning balances, the increases, the decreases getting to that ending balance in January. We had this beginning balance issue for the first month, but now that cleared balance to 61,241.85 will pull over and be the beginning balance in the bank statement in the second month. So I shouldn't have that issue anymore once we get online with our bank reconciliation. So we can see that uh, here where we can see when we have the reconciliation, we have our our statement balance being our cleared balance at the 61,241.85. Uh, if I minimize this, close this back out note that that amount of course is not what is on the the bank uh, or our books our books are showing as of the end of february 95779.05 so there's still a difference that difference of course is going to be the outstanding checks and deposits so we're going to do a similar type of process for the second month we'll be able to see some of those outstanding items for the prior period clearing in the current period and then you would expect some items in the current period that we know about have not yet been known by the bank and those will be the outstanding or reconciling items for the second month so we'll do this a little bit faster now because we've seen it before let's go to the first tab and we're going to go back into this reconciliation we're into the checking account once again the beginning balance notice it's hard coded now uh, because because uh, it's pulling in from the prior period. Now, if you if you needed to adjust the prior period, if this number was wrong and you did a bank reconciliation before, then you might actually have to go to the prior reconciliation and undo it, right? Redo the prior bank reconciliation so that you get your beginning balance to tie out. Once it's tied out, everything should move forward smoothly. 
Next, we're going to plug in our ending balance. We just manually do that from our bank statement. So that's going to be the 101590.05. So I'm going to say this is 101590.05. Let's make sure I got that right. 101590.05. 101590.05. This is going to be as of the end of February. So I'm going to say February 29th, noting that you don't want to do a bank reconciliation generally from just your online banking list of transactions. You want to have the actual bank statement because that gives you a defined cutoff date, which is going to be important for the reconciliation. I'm not going to be using these items down below. I still think that these are kind of legacy type of items. Most people don't use these days because they probably have the bank feeds on. Therefore, any service charges or interest earned would be put in place when you have the bank feeds. I also always kind of like to do it myself because I think these transactions can be confusing to people because it actually creates a transaction uh, that, you, that might be in a different format than you're used to. So I'm going to go ahead and say, all right, let's uh, start the reconciliation. So we have the similar process up top. This is the statement ending balance. This is just the amount that we plugged in manually. This is the cleared balance. What does the cleared balance consist of? It consists of the beginning balance. So if I compare that uh, to my statement here, the beginning balance is now correct. Notice I can check that off as we go. This is the summary up top. 61,241,85. So 61,241,85. And then we're going to have our payments or decreases and deposits. These will, of course, be populated as we start checking things off down below. Once we find everything that's on 